In this tutorial, I will show you how to draw a Christmas red squirrel with holly using colored pencils. I will discuss and demonstrate some techniques to drawing fur as well as how to blend, layer, and more. If you are a member of the student tier over on my Patreon, you have access to the real-time full version of this tutorial where I discuss in depth to the techniques and processes going on. And you also have access to the downloadable high resolution reference photo and color sheet with this tutorial as well. If you are not a member of my Patreon and might be interested in signing up, you can find me at patreon.com slash Jessica Matheny as well as the link to my Patreon is in the video description. By signing up for the student tier, you will have instant access to a growing library of real-time one to four hour tutorials and two new tutorials each month as well as other benefits. Let's get started on this squirrel tutorial. These supplies that I used for this drawing are Faber-Castell Polychromos colored pencils, the 60 set, Strathmore Bristol vellum paper cut to a six by eight inch size, a block of sandpaper for sharpening, a 2H graphite pencil for the sketch, a Tombow Mono Zero Eraser, a Faber-Castell pencil eraser, solvent in a jar, and a number three round gold tack line paintbrush for blending. You don't have to use solvent to blend with and can of course use burnish blending instead if you prefer. Now I tried my best to scale back on the amount of detail in this drawing as I was drawing it so that it wouldn't be too long and more practical to follow along with. The more details you add, the longer your drawing can take to complete. So if you want more details in your drawing, you are welcome to take the time to do that. Starting off with this drawing, I've already drawn my sketch using a 2H graphite pencil and then I took a eraser over it to lighten it up. The lighter your sketch is, the less it will show up through some of the lighter colors of your colored pencils. So it's kind of important to make sure you erase enough of it so that it's not going to ruin your drawing in the end. When you draw your sketch, just keep in mind that it doesn't need to have a whole lot of details. Mine are pretty basic just the outline of the animal and major body parts like the eyes, nose, legs, and paws. So what I'm starting with is black, of course, going in and getting the eyes because the eyes of the squirrel are really, really dark. So I wanna get the first couple of layers in on the eyes to get that accurate so that I can judge my values better down the line of drawing this squirrel's face and everything out. So now I'm taking warm gray and adding that in as a base layer to the area around the squirrel's eye. And when you're adding this in, pay attention to that reference photo and try to think of the shape that this particular area around the eye, that this creamy kind of white furry area around the eye, and you're trying to create that shape. Don't pay attention to the details, pay attention to the shape and get this first layer down. The cheeks or the lips of the squirrel are also kind of a light creamy color. So I want to get this warm gray down as the first layer over in those areas as well. If you look at your reference photo, you'll notice that there are lighter areas in the fur and darker areas. And of course there are areas between that too. Each kind of hair varies in the value. And so when you're working in your base layers here, which is what I'm doing right now, it's important to identify, pick out those lightest hairs that you see, the lightest colored hairs that you see, and try to match that color. So your first layer, you wanna get that color down across the whole entire area of that fur color that you're looking at. And once you have that layer in, because when you're working with colored pencils, you have to work from light to dark. So you get the lights down first and then go over that with dark because you can't go the other way. So getting that layer down, the lightest layer, saves you a lot of work in the end and having to come back through and going back with some of those lighter colors because they just won't show up later and trying to go through and get them in there after you've already added some of the darker colors, it's really kind of painstaking and frustrating to do. 
So to save yourself and make everything so much easier, it's important to try and get your lightest colors down first to help you with the whole fur building process. And now I'm going to take my number three round brush with some solvent and blend in this layers, the, the layers of the cream I just added as well as that warm brown too, or no, sorry, warm gray too. And the goal between this is it's only two light colored layers. However, it is the base layer for all of the fur. So I want to make sure that I blend it well into the paper and that there are no whites of the, the tooth of the paper showing through. So now I'm going to take warm, or not warm brown. <laughs> I cannot identify colors today. I am going to take walnut brown, walnut brown, and I am going to start adding in some of the shadow areas on the ear of this squirrel. I'll be doing both ears, but for now I'm starting on the left ear. And in doing this, as you can see, I'm using a semi-sharp pencil. I wouldn't say it's to an extremely fine point. However, it is quite noticeably sharp compared to what I was working with before. Okay, now I'm gonna take that cold gray two. I believe it was two, sorry if I missed that. It's the lighter cold gray out of the 60 set of Fabric Castell pencils. And now I'm really going to be taking this gray and adding it into the top part of the head of this squirrel. Because if you look at the reference photo, the lightest areas on the highlights of the fur kind of has a little bit more of a blue color than what we've got going on in the drawing. So now I'm gonna take black and go through and start adding in some of the areas that need a little bit darker in the ears and even some a little bit of the areas around the ears of the fur. And for this, I want to make sure I have a very sharp point on my colored pencil. So I'm using my sandpaper to sand it down to a finer point so that I can get these details where they need to be. 
I'm starting off around the eyelid of the eye. I know that you can't see what I'm doing right now, but I'm working on that same area I just did with the burnt sienna and the lid underneath as well. So it's just a tiny, tiny little faint line. It's not super, super dark. So as you're applying your pressure there, you wanna make tiny little faint strokes in the shape of the line. And this is important to try and maintain accuracy or you're gonna throw off the shape of the eyelid. And of course, if it's not dark enough, you can go over it again later and darken it up. I'm going to take burnt sienna again and now I'm going to start working in the shoulder of the squirrel and this way I get all of this kind of reddish brown color in there and I'm going to blend that out and while it's drying I'm going to work in the other areas of the squirrel. It's important as you go through the drying process with any of your drawings that you kind of think about which area you're going to work on next as you get kind of midway through another area that you may be working on. So you can kind of plan ahead and think, okay, well, I can get this layer done in this section and let that dry so that I can work on this. And this saves you time through the drying process. So that way you don't have to wait and diddle your thumbs while you wait for an area to dry because you can't work on anything else at that time. So I'm starting off with this burnt sienna and I'm working in some of these shadows first because I mentioned when you're doing really almost any subject, but especially subjects that have light areas, it's important to try and go and get some of the darker areas in first because that's going to help you judge your values better as you go through the drawing process with creating fur. And I just want to mention if this is your first time using solvents with this tutorial, Make sure that after you blend an area, you wait at least 15 minutes for it to dry before you add any layers over the top or else you could risk damaging your paper and not being able to add any other layers on top of it. As I get to the lower area of the squirrel, I'm not so worried about getting particular details in there. Uh, it's okay to use a, a blunt pencil for this because this isn't the focal point of the drawing. And you know, it's kind of behind the holly. It doesn't matter so much. So especially if you kind of mess up in this area, it's not gonna matter too much. The one thing though, is that you wanna make sure you get those, um, edges accurate around the holly so that it the whole drawing is going to look okay and that you don't have random pieces of fur going into the holly which the holly is in front of the squirrel.
So now I want to get my round brush with solvent and I'm going to blend all of this um, lower sections of the fur out. So now what I'm doing is I'm taking my pencil and turning it more to be parallel with the paper and drawing in larger hair strokes in the direction of the fur. It is important to pay really close attention to the direction of the fur and how much it changes from where you initially start to maybe it curves a little bit more on the upper section then it comes down a little bit lower and then back up again. There's all these little variations. So now I'm going to take my um, number three round brush with solvent and I'm going to blend this out. And for this particular area on th this squirrel, I'm gonna be using a little bit more solvent than I was with the fur of the squirrel. You wanna make sure you keep a lot on your pen, or pencil. You want to make sure you keep a lot on your paintbrush for this because as you drag out your strokes with this paintbrush, you're going to ultimately create additional hair stroke details. You're going to soften those hairs and it's going to pull it into a hair shape as well. And you do not want to soften it too much. So the more solvent that you have on your brush, the better. So now I'm going to take burnt ochre and incorporate some more of that into the sides of the squirrel because it's important to try and get a brighter orange color into the squirrel than what is currently going on in the drawing. Now I'm going to take walnut brown and start filling in the darker areas of the tail to get some of the fur details in there. And it is important to try and draw a little variation between the directions of the fur to keep the the fur or hairs in a main direction towards the upper right hand corner of the paper but to kind of curve it around a bit in certain places and make some variations there or otherwise it won't look so realistic and of course with drawing all of the hairs on the tail of the squirrel or at least majority of the individual hairs you want to try and start at the base of the squirrel and as you're dragging out into the right that you kind of squiggle or create not really a zigzag but because that would create sharp points but you just kind of want to wiggle your pencil back and forth just slightly so that you create kind of a wiggle in these hairs because the hairs on the squirrel's tail aren't all perfectly straight and we want to make sure that there's some variation there between the shape of the hairs. Now I'm going to begin drawing some of the holly leaves on this drawing and I am first starting off with a pine green and just going around the edges to define some of the edges to get more of a crisp line on them and then I'm going to fill out the leaves with a first layer of this pine green and then I'm going to use a lighter yellowish green to fill in a little bit of a yellow color to it and I'm going to top it off with an indigo blue. As you are drawing the leaves or filling them in with the first couple of layers of color pencil, try to leave some of the areas 
not colored in. And those are the areas that we're gonna be coming back through with a white colored pencil later and fill those in with white. And we don't wanna put a bunch of color there because then that's gonna make it kind of harder to create some of the little um, frosted highlights that are on these leaves. And with adding in this darker blue, I chose the indigo blue. You can choose whichever blue you like from your own set if you're using a different set than the Faber-Castell Polychromos colored pencils. And I feel like I went a little on the heavy side with adding in this blue. However, holly leaves tend to really vary in color, so it's not going to throw it off so much that it, it doesn't look okay like th they're gonna look fine the way that they are but if you would like to add a little bit more green then you may want to lay off of some of the blue you add in the last bit and maybe add a little bit more of a yellowish green or the pine green to kind of just bring out some more of that green through to the leaves And I'm just gonna carry through these green colors, a yellowish type of green, a pine green, which is a, a darker kind of yellow green, and the dark blue. Carry that through to some of the stem as well. And I'm also going to add a little tiny light layer of that dark blue over some of the other areas of the leaves where I'm going to be going through with white later to try and kind of add a little bit more of a blue color to that because it's not quite as white as some of the other areas on the previous leaves or even some of the other leaves that have a little bit more of that sheen to them. Now that I've got my first couple of layers down on these leaves, I'm gonna take my paintbrush, the number three paintbrush, with some solvent, and I am going to blend this all out. Now that everything I blended has dried, I am going to take my dark blue and start 
adding that in to these other leaves that I have drawn in here. And this time I'm going to kind of just lightly go over the white areas as I've mentioned before. I kind of left those untouched. But I do kind of want to add just a little tiny bit of this blue color to that. As I'm working into some of the other leaves on the right side, a few of those leaves have kind of veins showing in them. And in order to get those veins to show up, you're going to want to draw a little faint line in the direction that the vein goes and ends. And then from there on one section of it, usually you want to do it on the upper section of the line. So if you drew the line kind of in a vertical or not vertical, I mean horizontal. If you drew the line in a horizontal direction, then you're gonna wanna take your colored pencil and start kind of filling in from the top part of that line in a, a slight gradient and, and slowly stop putting as much colored pencil as you get further and further away from the line. And this is gonna kinda create that three-dimensional look that the leaves kind of are curved and it is going to highlight where the shine will be later and it just brings it together and makes it look more realistic. If you find yourself not really liking the way that your leaves look, you can just try to play around with them. The, the thing about leaves is they don't have to be extremely perfect to look realistic. But again, with working on leaves, you can kind of play around with the colors that you add to it, take away some of the either green by adding more blue to it or adding more green. And then of course, if you really don't like it, you can always take your eraser to it, take some of it off and just redo it all together. Just play around with the leaves and make them how you would like to, them to be. You don't have to follow mine exactly as, as I mentioned before. I kind of added a little bit more blue than I probably really would have gone for to begin with. And that's okay. Now with drawing the berries, I went with reds that had slight orange to them and filled them in with a burnish blend instead of solvent, just because they are small and easy to fill in. And I used a brown for the shadows. You want to avoid using black for shading until the last layer because it is only going to enhance shading and not make things look realistic on its own. If you were to use just black to shade with, the shading will look very harsh and not realistic. If you would like to learn more drawing techniques for animals from tutorials, you might want to watch the top right video, or you might alternatively be more interested in watching the video YouTube suggests for you in the bottom right. You can follow me on Instagram and Facebook to stay up to date with my latest artworks and the happenings of my studio. Until next time, thanks for watching.